Hi, I'm Jackie, and today I'll be roasting your portfolios. Well, I'll be, I'll be critiquing my patrons' portfolios, as promised in my last video. My last video was talking about what you need in a character design portfolio, how to create a character design portfolio, um, and I showed a lot of examples, so check that out a video out if you haven't seen it already. And in this video, I'm going to be critiquing and applying those advices to these next couple portfolios. If you're not familiar with my work, I'm a professional character designer. I've worked on characters for Netflix animated features. Um, I'm currently working at Warner Brothers for an animated feature. And I've also done things for Nickelodeon, DreamWorks, and everything in between. So I, I'd like to think that my advice is sound. <laughs> let's get started. So let's start with the first portfolio. First we have Emily Larabi. And starting off, we have very clear pages going into a character design portfolio. So what I like here, right away, we start with characters, we jump right into it. You do have a lot of pages and I think it could be condensed a lot. So let's talk about that. Um, Josie and the Pussycats redesigned. Here's the thing. If you know me, you know how I think about redesigns. There's a fine line between redesign and fan art. This reads to me like fan art. You know, a lot of these characters seem like you need to know the show in order to kind of understand who these characters are. Like these reoccurring secondary characters, you know, in the expressions you can tell maybe they're mean, maybe they're bullies, but other than that, there's not much that you're showing here. And I'm saying that because the poses are very static, except for this man on the very right, I think that his pose really conveys his character. But for these characters, you know, hands on hips, just standing straight, it doesn't convey a personality other than the face. So I always say in lineups, create as much personality as you can and show as much as the character as you can. If she's mean, like she looks like, maybe she's holding her phone in her hand, maybe her angles are more um, dynamic, more interesting, you know, to really convey the personality of this character. And there's also a lot of pages with lineups. And I also don't know any of these characters. Bring down the amount of lineups you have to just one lineup up to 10 characters maybe with really different silhouettes, really different personalities, different age groups, different body types. And then with that added space in this, I would put more poses and expressions. Here I see you have expressions from this character and I love that. Here you already have this pose in an earlier drawing, so I would take that out. This pose is also kind of basic. You know, I would keep in just the most exciting, dynamic, interesting poses with different angles. This one has a different angle than, you know, this one, that's a good angle. These two are very similar angles. Maybe change it up a bit. And then we have a page of poses. And I like that you have a page of poses, but they are kind of similar to one another. You know, her personality seems very similar to the previous girl's personality. What makes this character really stand out and have poses that really convey that personality aspect of her? So for this batch, what I would do is I'd make one lineup with the most dynamic characters. I'd add more character posing, more character expressions. And if you're going to have a turnaround, you know, it doesn't have to be its own page. It could be small on an existing page and having character exploration all on one page as well. I also wouldn't really add writing. No one's gonna read the writing to be honest. I'm sorry to say, I honestly didn't read the writing. Your portfolio should on its own be visual enough to explain everything you're trying to explain. And then I see in your next project, you have American Girl designs. I think these are really cool designs, but I think that you can really condense it. I have, you see, um, oh, and you can't click it. I think you should make it clickable. Okay, so these three are the same character and I see that this is just a black and white version of that, so I would take that out. And here is also the exact same design, but with some reference. And what I would do, I would add one or two references, just like a few references on the side here, but you don't need a full explanation of how you got into those characters. Same with the rest of the pages, you have a lot of reoccurring. If you want to show these underdrawings, you can add it small on this page just to show that you have sketches. And then I love how you have on the same page expressions. Same with this, you don't need this. You don't need all these references. Um, 60s era Spider-Woman. I'm sorry, but this reads as fan art to me. 
I wouldn't put this in. You know, maybe you could have this not in your portfolio. You could have a secondary page where you have, you know, personal drawings. You can have that. But for your portfolio, I wouldn't put anything having to do with another IP unless it's a reimagining of something that hasn't been visualized yet. And then we have Scout Troop Designs. Man, you have a lot of work in your portfolio. I think that this is your most unique project and I would put this at the top of your portfolio. I think you have some really great expressions and some sketches here. You have a turnaround GIF, I think that's pretty dope. I think that you can organize this a little bit better just so each page has its own spotlight. So I don't have to go and click everything in order to see it. And I also can't even see it because it's it doesn't it's not clickable. For character costumes like this, I wouldn't just have a page of character costumes in the same poses. It kind of is redundant. Same with this. You know, maybe you could have you can add this to one page and have three of each if you really want to put it in. But I'm more interested in these pages um, with character posing and character sketches, as well as this part. These characters are interacting, there's poses. I think that this is your big bang. Also, this is a really interesting design. I haven't seen um, you explore anything like this in your portfolio. I'd like to see more poses from this character. Yeah, you have a lot of cool things, but they're just so small. <laughs> I can't see most of your of your work. So I'd, I really think you should um, reorganize the way your portfolio is put together just so everything is clickable because only some of these images are clickable. My web drawing isn't working, so I'm just going to do this on Photoshop. These characters don't add enough interest in the lineup that I would put all of them in. And, and I mean, their, their silhouettes and their shapes aren't dynamic enough. These two characters look so similar in the sense that they have the same arm up, they say have the same sash up, and their legs are very similar. They're just so similar in shape and form that if one is nervous, really show that she's nervous. Create a really interesting and dynamic silhouette that conveys that, like this. You know, and if she's small, really exaggerate that she's small, perhaps. Let's say this one is the tallest. Make her much taller. Make her much bigger to create an interesting dynamic. And also showcase that her personality is different from someone else's personality. What's the difference with this character and this character? They both seem confident. Let's really show that this character is different than this one. Maybe this character is short and much larger, creating an interesting silhouette. Maybe this one is the tall, thin, pretty one. Maybe this one has a different body type. What's the difference with this character and this character? If their personality does the same thing, take one character out and let the other one shine. Simplifying and really picking your best out of what's given. I think that your previous pieces are better and I don't think you need this at all. I think this is an interesting project that you can put on one page. It doesn't need to be separated out like this because this design is the same as this design. You don't need to have your reference on how you did it. Same with this. You could take these two pieces out and merge this page onto that page. And if you really want to show this, you put it all on one page. But all in all, you have a lot of work. I think you can condense half of this to have a much shorter portfolio, stack things up, one after the other, so we're only seeing one page after another and you're not competing for attention for different pieces. I think your work is very strong and this is a really good character design portfolio. I think that with a little bit of tweaking and showcasing different elements of your drawings can really push it to the next level. Okay, so next we have Parker Nielsen and let's take a look at this portfolio. I like strong colored piece at the beginning. Showing characters right away, that's great. Okay. Wow, a lot of work, a lot of work. Okay, I think you can condense this. So we're looking here at the magician's books. You know, having a turnaround small, I think that's good. Having poses, you have some sketches, characters interacting, some moments and exploration. In terms of organizing, I don't think you should have, you know, this exploration at the top. We want to see your strongest stuff at the top. I would put maybe characters interacting, characters in a scene at the top, something with color, something to really catch someone's attention. And also all of these sketches are all the same size. In order to catch someone's attention, what you could do is you could take your, your most exciting and dynamic sketches, make them bigger, make your other sketches smaller. So maybe this 
is much smaller. Maybe it takes a smaller amount of space. Same with these. Maybe this is something big on the side. There's a one big image here. There's a big image here. There's smaller things here. You know, adding a little bit of dynamic presentation is always like a fun thing to show. For your character poses here, I think you could really push them. This character is pretty static. Maybe he's Maybe he's so shocked he's like falling backwards, you know what I mean? Open up that pose, make him really exaggerated, something like that. If he's blowing on this, maybe really push this line of action. Maybe he's a dramatic guy. Really exaggerate his movements to open up his silhouette. Really push it, you know, you could really push his pose here, same here. His silhouette is so closed because of these rings. Maybe you can open it up show that he's doing all this stuff up here and he's proud of it <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> and he's going wow wow what's gonna be in this box i'm gonna find out it's magic Whoa! and think of your poses in three quarters you know straight flat front poses aren't as dynamic as three quarter side photo drawings. Same with this one. If this was three quarter side, you wouldn't have to foreshorten this and you would really see all the elements that's being done a lot better. Okay, then we have the next project in your portfolio. Man, you know what you should do here? This should be your opening page with your name across. I think that'd be a really strong opening of a little viz dev moment to show that you can do more than one thing. I think this is a really good page and I think here's the rest of your pages should follow it. You have a small turnaround, exploration, and then you have a little bit of posing. I think that this piece and this piece are the same piece and you don't need it twice. You can add more facial expressions in this gap that you leave because this is really strong and I wanna see how you can move the mouth in different angles. The zooming in when I hover is annoying, so please change that. <laughs> I don't think you need this on the right um, of the face doing the same expression from a different angle. I think this expression is very similar to this and this expression, so you don't need to show it more than once. Same here, um, this expression right here of him gasping, I would love to see it in a different angle, you know, and then you don't need the rest of these things. And you have a lot of expressions here and with different angles, which I think is great. Here with a pose page, I think that, you know, you could really push these poses like I showed earlier. And I like that you have, you know, a colored version and then next to it, you have a bunch of sketches of posing. But like I said, put that visual development piece at the top. I think that that would make this a lot stronger. For this piece, I think that you could really condense it down to one page. Thumbnails are cool and all. I don't think you need all of them. You could just have a few. These poses are strong. You can add all these little thumbnails, really small and then have space to put this kind of stuff here. Observational drawing, I don't think you need this. I think you have a lot of other strong things that connect to each other. I don't think you need this page at all. Rat exploration is pretty cool, but I think you could put it onto one page and your favorite rats can be big and then the other ones can be small in a grid. And I think you have a great start. I think pushing some things could really help and reorganizing some things could also be really great. And that's it for this video. I hope this was interesting. Um, let me know what you think. Comment your portfolio in the comments and maybe I'll do another one of these someday if I'm not lazy. Okay, bye.